We're about to do uh, uh, Tony Stark experimenting with the combination of boots and gauntlets. This is his first successful flight in his workshop. Uh, Robert here has done a lot of training on this wire rig, and the tests we've done were pretty successful. Ready and action. You're off right here. Frame up on me. Good. Day 11, test 37, configuration 2.0. For lack of a better option, dummy is still on fire. Safety, if you douse me prematurely, I swear to God, I will donate you. You'll be at a city college. All right, we're gonna start off really nice and easy. Don't talk when I'm talking. 1% capacity in three, two, one. Steady. I've done wire work both as an actor and as a director in the past. I think people have been seeing wire work for so long that whether consciously or subconsciously they could tell where the pick points are, they could tell where the wires are attached and even if you use you know computers to paint everything out there's something about the physics of it that is unconvincing to me and I was very skeptical if we could use it at all or if we take the audience out of the movie. What we did was we developed a way by which the character was picked or supported by his feet. So he wasn't being suspended by a center of gravity or his hips or his back, as is usually done in these films. Hey, uh, sorry, clean up later. His feet are supporting his weight. So it actually looks like he's being supported by the blast of the repulsors in the bottom of his boots. And you could see the dynamics as he's flying through the air feels much truer to what the real physics of flying being powered by your feet would be. Learning one's powers is always the most fun. Okay. What would happen to you or to me or to anybody putting this thing on and trying to operate it? It's like surfing. I feel pretty clumsy in the beginning. And here is, he's wearing an engine, pretty elaborate thing. Yeah, I can fly. <laughs> oh, man. Ready, and light, and action. Something interesting happened when we saw a black and white rendering of the Mark III. It looked kind of silver, and uh, it started our wheels turning, and then we, we, we sort of backed into the design of the Mark II, which is sort of a chromed aircraft aluminum sheet metal looking prototype version of the Mark III. And then we started incorporating exposed rivets. And because of the wonderful finishes that they were able to create through the chroming process and nickel plating process over at Stan Winston, it really has a very unique look. And that's something different from anything you've seen in the books before. But it helped provide sort of an intermediate step between the Mark I armor and the, and the final Mark III design. Tommy, how much is that car? $50,000. It's a replica of a uh, 1967 Cobra SC. Where's it made? In Poland at a uh, MIG factory. like cars at all, that hurts. My background as a filmmaker is not in this sort of genre. I've dabbled a little bit in special effects in Zathura and ALF, but, but really I come from more of an independent background, primarily a comedic background. And so I really wanted to offer uh, a human side that would fit in with, uh, with my sensibility of filmmaking 
And in assembling the cast that I did between Robert Downey Jr. and Jeff Bridges, Gwyneth Paltrow, Terrence Howard, that's a cast that I would be happy to have in a, in a drama or a comedy. And to be able to have them to support a bigger than life superhero really offers the possibility to exceed what people's expectations might be of this type of genre.